back in the tent here at the Plowing Championships and I'm joined by, by Noel Dunn who is the Machinery Editor of Irish Farmers Monthly and, you're, Jim, and Noel you're also heavily involved in the NPA here and the site and everything that's going on and I'm also joined by Agriland Editor Jim Breen. Thank you Claire. Thanks, Thank you, thanks for joining Delighted us. Delighted to be here. Good. So Noel, first off I suppose can um, you outline maybe, look, it's been, it looks like it's been a dream start for the Plowing Championship out there. The weather is unbelievable. There seems to be a huge volume of people around. Um, what's the traffic situation been like around the, the site? traffic has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, of course, it's been a dream start to this event, which, you know, uh, all week when we're setting up here, it was good and dry. We got a lot of machinery in and stuff like that. And that relates to everything else. The confidence is up and people are happy. So now what is happening is, is people are coming along and they're actually listening to what was said earlier on about the traffic plan. Turn off your satin have followed the instructions and traffic is moving in very well we've and i would say we have we'll probably have a record tuesday here today a lot of people are coming in easy so power parks are filling up well and people are happy coming in good so good very strong footfall it looks like and maybe another record breaker and um, so no what's going on on the site here today um, obviously there's the livestock arena, the innovation arena, the machinery and uh, loads of food and businesses, all those exhibitors here, but what, what else is happening? What's kind of left of field going on? Well, here left of field, there's just so many things. I often say about the ploughing, like, I mean, you can get in from a plough pint to a pint down here, you know, and everything in between. You had the brown, bed, <laughs> brown bread breaking competition with Edward Hayden running over three days. We have Little and Aldi hosting country music star Derek Rines, and uh, I don't know who else is singing down in the Aldi stand, but also you've got Seamus Moore who's in the Nurney Bar. You have Richie Kavanagh down in another tent. So you have a lot of entertainment for people that just don't want, just want to have a fun day out. You have plenty of machinery to see, you have the innovation arena. On top of that then, there's so many competitions going on. I believe Marty Morrissey and the guy which won um, Love Island uh, is down on the NDC stand. So there's loads of people milling around there. And basically, if you get tired of eating burgers and chips and looking at shiny new metal, you can head down the field and watch over 300 competitors over three days plough. And that is something to see. I mean, the, the intensity of that, as a fellow described it the other day, was like the Dublin, uh, the first Dublin and Kerry match, you know, because people are out competing, you know, there's a lot out there. You have, you have, the, top, uh, you have the top juniors, you have the top seniors, and you have the top ladies out ploughing over the next couple of days. And that's something worth seeing, because that's what the ploughing really, uh, Claire, is all about. And there's about 300 competitors Overall, part. in different sections over the three days, so it's vast, you know, and that's something that always say, what's the ploughing? It's the ploughing championship itself that goes on out in the field, and it's just worth seeing. If you have, if you, a lot of people have come to this show, right, and they've never gone by the tents, right, or by the stalls or stuff like that, get out in the field, see what's happening, see the passion that fundamentally has made this show what it really is today. Yeah, and of course our tillage specialist Siobhan Walsh is covering all that from us, so keep in touch with Siobhan on her updates. Jim, can um, I bring you in, Jim, on, I suppose, what machinery is on show here on site today. You've had a chance to, to have a look around. I have. I've there. spent a few days on site, Claire, and even to hear Noel describing the event is like an event in itself. That's to hear, <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to catch a breath, Noel, but, uh, but that was fantastic. But Claire, look, there's a huge amount of machinery. It's great to see this year. Uh, a lot of plant and construction machinery, so great to see that back in again. And even in the machinery demonstration area, an unusual Russian tractor, which Noel would have been involved in as well, yep, won yep. by a champion ploughman over in Russia last June. That's here. Uh, Pottinger's biggest disc harrow in Ireland, which I think Anne-Marie might have told you about last night, Claire. So all of that's there. But like there's a four axle silage trailer that's about 36 foot long. There's an amazing amount of equipment here on site. And if anybody has even a passing interest in machinery, I would definitely say whether you're in Donegal, whether you're in Kerry, whether you're in Mayo, or whether you're next door, you could do far worse than come and spend a day or even two days at this event. Now you reiterate that because definitely what I would say is that we're just after coming off stage, so Michael Lee is down at the moment officially opening it and I just came from there and before that we actually had Jim was down at the launch actually he'll tell you himself, we had a very happy guy which won the National Plowing Association Machine of the Year, third year of the competition, very very highly contested right this year and a little engineering company called Palatine Engineer, Jim was down with me at it, That's won right. it actually and Jim will tell you That's about right. it. And, and we rushed yeah. back Claire, we rushed back for this broadcast, now I was a little bit faster than Noel on my feet but Look at that happens. <laughs> it happens. You know what I mean? He's, you know, he's, he's, he's got uh, you know, a few years on me the other way. But just going back to what Jim is actually saying, you know, Claire, the fundamental thing about it out here, right, this is the biggest outdoor event in Europe. 
there is in excess of, I say, Jim, 35, 40 million euros worth of machinery down here. The amount of Irish manufacturing companies that use this as their launch and their springboard to launch their new products is absolutely unbelievable. Just a few. Malone, McHale, we call them the West of Ireland gang, right? We've Malone, we've Major and McHale. Those three companies for the last number of years have been launching brand new products, haven't yeah, you, Jim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, at sometimes I think people want to have a go at the ploughing match. Like, there was a little bit made of the fact that maybe Agco Corporation as a corporation wasn't here. But the irony is there's actually far more Massey Ferguson tractors here, I'd say, this year than ever before. Absolutely. Yeah. And the same with Fent tractors. So look, at all the dealers are here, all the local representatives are here, all the equipment is here. So I think it's really encouraging to see. It's a really vibrant show. I, and I suppose the timing of it as well, because we the two panel discussions we've had so far has been focused on on the beef situation and what's happening and how farmers can potentially get around what's what's going on. Um, so this is a really positive story, I suppose, for farming at the moment and this in the current climate. In the current, look, I I always I'm a great believer in it, and I remember my father Arthur Mercy used to say the story. He says farmers will spend money in good times, they'll spend it in bad times. When uncertainties around, they won't spend it all. And what often happens is now, you, you, you know, farmers are the most resilient people in the planet. They take absolutely everything thrown in there, from prices, that to be the bad weather, no matter what it is, and they always bounce back. And the great thing is that a lot of people coming here today, you know, they've had all sorts of price issues, uh, the current beef issue, like, right? but they're coming here today, a lot of people sort of said, look at, you know, negotiations are going on, let's go down to plough and let's enjoy it. And you can see, I spoke to two standholders this morning, what's the level of inquiries being like? And said, you know what? Just people are very buoyant, they're very happy, and they're pricing, you know, and you can always get a sense of a fellow comes up and gives the old tire a kick, yeah, Jim. Yeah. Look, very th little yeah. of that going on. Yeah, there's been a lot of negativity, Claire, as you well know, yeah. uh, in the industry, look, the last six, seven weeks. Look, it's great. I think it's a break for everybody today, just, and it's a, there's a lot of goodwill about, you know, there's good weather. It's a chance for people just to unwind a little bit, just to maybe get away from the reality of the farm gate prices at the minute, and just enjoy the couple of days that it is. And sorry, no. Just in terms of what's coming up now, obviously we've day we're halfway through mm. day one. Uh, so day two, day three, what's coming up? What would you advise? Well, I can tell you now, Claire. I mean, down your line, when if passion is your fashion, right? We have got the Etihad <laughs> best dressed lady, and then we've also best dressed gentleman tomorrow. Jim is thinking of entering, I believe he's still hanging I, up I, in I'm the well, car. I'm well lined up for that one. We have the uh, brown bread baking <laughs> competition again tomorrow with Edward Hayden and the crew, and there's all oh, lots of demonstrations going on. We have, uh, as Jim mentioned earlier on, that's happening, right? And and a lot of activities happening all over the place, you know. Uh, there's a couple of very unique little stands as well. I got a special little request I must bring out for you, actually. It stands, now, um, I'm thinking of buying a few tickets myself. Jim might give me a loan. Stand 429, uh, uh, I should say row 40, stand 429, a Massey 135, which has been put up uh, by a locals down here in County Carlow Vintage Club, right? Uh, so basically, you can buy a ticket for a tenner and win a Massey 135 and support Crumlin Hospital well. I think that is something very very much you should go down and see. Absolutely, everyone should, uh, Absolutely. should, should it's, get it's, involved it's word, there. It's, and it's, it's a wordy, wordy cause. Brilliant. Well, look, it's great catching up with you, Noel, and you'll be back uh, with us back on tomorrow. the live stream over the, next, forward to it. over the next couple of days. And Jim, also, thanks very much for popping in. Maybe you'll come back to us as well. <laughs> thank you, Claire. <laughs> great. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, that's it, and we'll be back again soon.